welcome to part two in my video series about my updated TrainSim Classic controllers. If you haven't seen the first video, there's a link below in the description, and that will just go through the basics and the very early prototypes. But this is going to be an update on how I've got on since then. Right here is the base station, so without messing around any further, let's get on with it and talk about this. So this is the base station. It was just made of cardboard before with a couple of panels, but now here it is, fully constructed, 3D printed, with a frame and panels on it, and wiring, lots of wiring, for illumination and for the data connections to the Arduino, which is in and mounted. Uh, there are also some mislabeled things here for the screen, but we'll talk about that later. We have some power bus bars down the sides, and we just have a temporary ground bus bar down here and it's in a base with some dovetails and around the front where we previously had some temporary buttons we now have all of the white buttons with numbers and the numbers are mostly in the middle of the uh, button itself we have the screen and the forward and back buttons and on the front the three silver buttons mentioned before and finally the correct push and pull switch for DRA so before I go into any more details, let's hook this up to power and show you the illumination. And here we are with the illumination, initially running on 12 volts from the little portable power supply. You can see the lights at the top, even though the camera isn't picking them up the best, they look a lot better in real life, they look really retro, quite yellow. And the LEDs here running quite happily on 12 volts as they're designed for. This DRA switch will illuminate, but it doesn't have a separate lighting circuit like all the others do so it actually takes its power from the switch essentially that's caused me a few problems but I will insert some b-roll just to show what it looks like when it's on and then if we take the power down to 9 volts which is what I have on the bench with me everything's a little dimmer but it's not too bad in fact weirdly the way the camera is handling the light, it looks just as good on the camera, but there's quite a big difference in real life. So that's my illumination setup. It wouldn't be fair to show you this without showing you the screen working. So this is it with all the train profiles imported from the old base station. I can switch between them using this button, so class 37, and there are multiples because that's how it was set up before, 4366, and etc, etc. Um, yeah, sometimes they go off the end or don't fit in the centre, but that's just how this is set up. And then this will, just as before, this will then have individual profiles for the trains based on the number, and it'll have different timings for the throttle and brake, but it won't be sending signals out like it did on the old module because there's nothing to send signals to. It really is a bit of a jumble around the back here, but I'll try and show you what I can. We have six wires here that consist of four wires going to the screen, which this is mislabeled, it should be the other way around, and then in there are, there are two wires that also go to the positive of the switches. The grounds of those two switches for the screen are here, and they tie in. And then behind everything we've got the connectors for the 1 to 9 buttons. They have an illumination circuit that goes to the positive and ground, and then the individual wires come down to the Arduino. I'll take the front cover off and give you a quick look at that shortly. Then the front switches are just the same. Inside the Arduino has these little terminal blocks on there which are really useful for connecting up. Um, I had to do quite a lot of jiggling around, juggling around to try and work out how to get everything to fit on here because these terminal blocks are a little bit of a pain they take up more than one pin and of course even though this is a big Arduino the digital pins at the bottom are completely reserved for the ribbon cable and then I've got to try and plug everything else in so it's been a little tricky um, there are certain pins that I have to use for the screen as well the SDA and SCL right back here so it's been interesting but now this this base station is fully working apart from the illumination on the DRA switch because apparently it doesn't get enough current. I think the internal resistance on this is too high. 
as we're speaking about that switch, um, well, that switch isn't the first of its kind. I bought another one, I bought one first, and um, it all worked okay, until I've 3D printed this out of clear PTG, and um, it was just too tight on the threads. It's, um, I think, an M11 thread, and it was just too tight, and it actually twisted the internals and uh, this this thing just kind of fell apart and I, I didn't know how it went back together. With the front panel mostly removed you can see inside better, you can see all the connections to the Arduino at the bottom including the far end connection that goes to the bus bar that's just sort of floating which is ground and then the screen connectors there at the end. You can see the three connectors on this switch and by the way this switch as well which is working this originally had an LED in with a resistor for running on, I think it was 32 or 24 volts. It actually stepped it down. I've replaced it with a plain resistor, hoping that the Arduino will be able to power it, and it usually can power an LED just fine, but the internal resistance on this switch seems to be too high, unfortunately. I still need to work out how to get around that. But here you can also see the construction of this frame with the heat inserts that I've used. Uh, this probably isn't the final version, I've got a few screws sticking at the sides here, but it's basically two U-pieces and then these sections that join it together and then the panels on the top. You may have noticed in here that the connector on the Arduino on the digital pins is completely different to what it was before. The big connector I was using previously looked fine initially, but actually it mirrors the pins, so they were all the opposite of what I thought they were, or what they said they would be, and it made things very confusing for wiring, so I found this IDE 40 pin straight back to back connector, which is much better for the job. Moving on from the base station now, and we have one of the side wings, which is still in a semi prototype phase. This isn't finished, uh, partly because I got the model wrong when I printed it, otherwise, it would be. And this is the left side, so the base station goes here, and this is where the modules connect, the DB37 connectors I mentioned previously, which are now tied in. I'll show you those and how they're locked in shortly. But around the whole thing, it has all panels which are all screwed on, excuse me about that, apart from this corner which is missing a piece, and I think it all looks really nice and neat. Some fiddling went on to try and get this to sit flush, uh, especially because there are screws here, some modifications are needed to be made to the modules themselves, but it's all part of the process, I suppose. The opposite dovetail is here that then connects into the base station, and we have some heat inserts. One there, this isn't here yet, but everything else again is heat inserts and a 3D printed frame. So let's get the top off and show you what's inside here. By the way, Flex electric screwdriver this was in the Flex advent calendar that I had last year. It's fantastic, highly recommended. Uh, I think what you actually pay for the advent calendar, you get this for less than it's worth. And it's essentially the same as the Denali one that's won all of the tests. Uh, so it, it's really good, especially with these thin bits. And with the lid off, we see pretty much what we had on the cardboard layout, which is the two circuit boards. This is all a bit <laughs> flimsy now. In the two holders, and this is all 3D printed, I've actually sunk in some grub screws here. These weren't part of the original plan because I've had basically had to move the whole thing back and I even had to trim the boards. Uh, and these just stop them from coming out. There's quite a lot of friction when you plug something into these connectors and it can actually pull the boards out if they aren't held in place. So that's the solution for that problem. Again, this is all still prototyping, the final version will be a bit better. And although it's quite tricky to get it all in, this is what the two pieces look like together. I haven't quite decided what's going to go here yet, or what's going to go here, maybe a little notepad, maybe a little logo of something from one of the train models, but uh, this is what it'll generally look like, and I think this all looks pretty good. Now let's have a look at the modules.
in terms of modules, I've been pretty busy. I've got one, two, two and a half maybe, it's got holes in the side, and, and maybe 2.8, 2.7, and admittedly these three are just conversions of the HST modules I had in the old project boxes, but I needed to do that to test them. This one clearly is not assembled at all. This is the what was the base station, which had all the um, screen and everything in it before. Now it's going to be much, much simpler because it just has the reverser, the AWS switch and the horn. That's all it needs. Then we have, I'm going to get rid of these briefly. We have the first of the lever modules, which has a big hole in the side. The reason it has a hole in the side is because I need to work out where to put this notch plate. And um, yes, I can measure. It'll hang down from this top section. I can measure, but it's easy to be able to visualize it and then remake this piece here. But same as the others, it's mounted on the base. Again, heat inserts. And it does the same as the other one. Again, these are much taller. So let's go to the next one. Actually, let's, let's skip straight to the Class 66 because this module is rather heavy and it's fully wired and fully working. And this is obviously going to be Class 66 brake. This has some experimental cutouts in here, which um, are what I mentioned before to clear, clear the screws that are on the base station side wing. Yeah, this is all working. The only things it doesn't have, obviously speed control doesn't work on Train Sim Classic, but also the logic isn't in there for this sander switch. That's it, really. These nice metal buttons are much better than the plastic ones I had before, although I've kept one of the plastic ones for the uh, HST controller. But yeah, joysticks for auto brake, horn and the direct brake here are all good. I think I want to take this off and sand this and polish it slightly. But this is really heavy. I'll insert some pictures now of what this looks like inside because I don't really want to be taking this apart just now. I'm really happy with how neat the wiring is inside with all of the thicker cables I'm using and the ferrules. I'm just really happy about how robust it's going to be. Finally let's have a quick look at this controller which is the left controller from the HST. Everything's a bit dusty. This is fully wired apart from the headlight rotary encoder. I need to follow my own instructions for that. Um, and I need to use a couple of extra bits of the breakout board for this. But we have the standard wipers, the standard button arrangement, the DVD hand press. I haven't added uh, a USB port to this yet to use the pedal that I had previously, but I will do that. And of course the emergency brake switch using the newer style switches. I'm really a fan of these, they're much better, much better than these. This is, as I say, mostly wired and it has the connector in the back to connect to the base station. I'll put a picture up now of what the Class 66 module looks like when it's attached to the base station. So that's everything again for now. I'll be back again once I have another update. I'm really pleased with how the progress has been. Uh, I've had a few other projects on, so maybe it's stalled a little bit, but I'm hoping to get these modules finished and working soon so I can actually play the game. I'll be back when I've got a new update. Thanks again for watching.